so while we're waiting for the incubator, you know, phase out and everything, Tony wanted us to guess the genes in this. Y'all missed it, but um, Cassie thinks it's an orange dream, yellow belly, calico, het desert ghost, hypo, high bald, normal, super normal, ball python. What do y'all think it is? What is it? What's going on YouTube? So, hope y'all really enjoyed uh, the little bloopers reel that we just posted uh, a couple of days ago, and then the two videos prior to that would been with Eric Walsh from Monster Morph. We had a ton of feedback off of some of the stuff that he brought up, and uh, we really appreciate that. And we sold a lot of snakes off of those projects, so we really appreciate that too, uh, myself and Eric. So. Anyway, uh, today we're going to talk about a clutch that we just hatched a couple weeks ago. And before that, I'm just going to show off this crazy thing. What is it? I don't know. That's at least the people think about it for a second. Right. Yeah, we'll get back to him on that. Yeah. It's obviously not the new Dream Sickle, though. No, definitely not the new Dream Sickle. So we really apologize for that last episode. Um, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I thought it was funny. I thought it was hilarious. Apparently, a lot of people didn't. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Anyway, so this is one of my favorite productions from 2019. This is Calico, obviously. Mm -hmm. You can definitely see the white. Orange Dream. Kind of pick, picked that up because of the, uh, the orange color. And then the oddball gene here that kind of doesn't really make sense as to why it does this. But the oddball gene here is chocolate. This is calico, orange, orange green, green, chocolate, chocolate, you know, 100 percent head desert goat. So it's so, a chocolate dipped orange. I mean, no. Come on, I don't man. know. I, I like I don't like the color of this doing right here. Yeah. Well, what's so crazy about this is look, look, just cover this up for a second. That front part of the snake. Mm -hmm. Okay, I can see chocolate. I can see calico a little bit on the sides, but when you cover the front part up. Wow, look at... I know, it's just like... Look, um, with, look at what the orange dream and the calico combined on the rear end just made this thing ridiculous. So yeah, it, it just, all that funkiness takes away from looking at, yeah. at, the, at the front of it. So I'm, you know, super stoked to have hatched this girl last year and, and definitely, you know, not going anywhere. When I first hatched, the, the chocolate ate this calico up so much yeah. that you really, it really kind of looked blah. But I just seen some potential there that I thought I thought that calico would get better as it aged, and it definitely is. So anyway, so that's that. So let's get uh, let's get a group of babies out and show you what uh, what we're going to talk about today. Cool. This is the mama to the clutch that we we're talking about today, and this is a pastel tiger, and then she is double head for exanthic and pod. Exanthic and pod. Yep. So, oh, it's a double hit. So she was bred to a super pastel tiger, triple hit, exanthic pod, and then hypo as well. Right. So the clutch that she made, um, of course, we didn't get visual hypos, but everything in the clutch is 50% head hypo as well. But we did get pods and exanthics um, from this clutch. So unfortunately, I did not hit the exanthic uh, pod, which I really wanted to. But we did get some really interesting results that I didn't even think about when I was doing the pairing. So, as I just mentioned, Pastel Tiger. I've had a lot of people ask me lately about what the Tiger Gene is. And we've done an episode on Tiger Gene already with right. some of the visual exanthics. But it's still a little confusing. It can be. Yeah. And uh, unfortunately, both of uh, the exanthics that I wanted to show off with the tiger gene are ovulating right now. Okay. So we're not gonna mess with those. But this will this girl will do for what we need it to. 
So what the tiger gene is, is a genetic banding. Something similar to like what blade, you hear blade a lot, especially with clown, kind of gives a reduced pattern. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what tiger does. But what it also does is it helps lighten the animal up. So it's an enhancer gene similar to like fire or something like that. Okay. Miguel Joloff, or Michael Joloff, however you want to say his name, I think he gets called a little bit of everything. But him, and I believe his father, I'm not 100% sure if his father was involved in it or not, but I've heard that. And I, honestly, I've never asked him, but I probably should. Um, but anyway, they imported the, an Xanthic line and it was called the Joloff. That's the ones that we, we exactly. have in our That's what we have, yeah. what we work with. So it's a Joloff line example. Mm -hmm. It's not VPI, it's not SK, it's not Marcus Jane, it's not, it is not compatible with any of those other lines. This is the Joloff line example. Got it. Okay. But also along with those came another gene. Kind of like the way red gene and ringer gene came along with the blackhead. Kind of how is lever. That why, is that why a lot of my blackheads have the red gene and the ringer? Okay, all right. I never knew that. Yep. Those three genes came in on one snake. Okay. So they thought that, you know, you could only have those genes if it was blackhead. Got but, it. But we've separated it out. Got it. Same thing with the uh, leopard pod. Everybody thought that leopard was always in pod and that all the leopards were hip pods, but that was later proven that it's two separate genes. You Got have it. leopard and you have pod. Similar to what happened here. He had Xanthics, but he also had another gene involved with those Xanthics. That gene is called Tiger. Okay. Now, somewhere along the lines, somebody decided that Inchi Desert, not Desert Ghost, Inchi Desert, mm -hmm. was gonna be dubbed the name Tiger. So there's been a crap ton of confusion. When you say Tiger, people go to Google or, or World of All Pythons and mm -hmm. they type Tiger in and it goes to Inchi Desert. That's not what this line is. This is the Tiger gene. This is the gene by itself. This is not a combo. This has nothing to do with Desert. It has nothing to do with Inchi. This is a gene by itself. Okay, so, so, so again with ball Python people just naming stuff, stuff because they wouldn't name it. Basically, <clears throat> and it gets very confusing. So what is the tiger gene? The tiger gene? Yeah. It's easy. It's when you take a Joe Exotic and, and a Python King and you stick them together and then you get a... No? Tony has not seen the Tiger King. He's not going to watch the Tiger King. Yeah. Anyway. He has no idea half the jokes I say. So, as I just said, the tiger gene is an enhancer or a brightener or similar not fire, but lightens animal okay. similar to what fire does. So that, you know, makes the animal automatically look better. But what it also does is a pattern. As I mentioned, it is a reduced pattern. And you particularly see that on the tail. So instead of getting alien heads, now you get the alien heads that you normally have, you know, the keyholes inside mm -hmm. of those. They start fading away. They start fading away, especially towards the tail. So so I guess the stripes like a tiger. I guess or, the looks stripes like a, looks like, like a rib cage like or something like that. There yeah. you go. So that's where that name come from, is the stripes. I'd the I say it's a great. Oh, yeah. There we go. I'm trying to make Daniel laugh so bad, and he's just out of, out of camera. Our buddy Daniel's with us too. Yeah. He's wanting to be shy today and not be in the film. But anyway, so that's where the name Tiger came from. I dig it. So, what we have is, is a, an animal that is lightened by the tiger gene, mm -hmm. as well as that pattern, especially towards the tail. So, you said earlier it's an enhancer. Mm -hmm. So, is it an enhancer like, um, you said like fire, like, so is it an enhancer like special, or is it something mm -hmm. completely different? Right. Well, special is in a bell complex, like Mojave and Lesser right. and things like that, so um, it's not in that, it's not a gene like that. Right. But special normally makes things look better. Mm -hmm. Yes. So, does this, but doesn't have the side effects that the other one does. Right. Got it. Okay. Not gonna make blue eyes with this. Right. Got it. I'm on it. So anyway, I've gotten a ton of people asking about the tiger, so I decided that because we just made some really cool babies from this clutch, I'm going to show that clutch off. I wanted to explain what the tiger does, and I'm explaining this because when I show you one of these snakes, 
you're going to see where I'm coming from on this. Okay, I'm ready to be astounded and amazed. Cool. It's warm in here. It is. It smells like it. Yeah. Okay, as I mentioned, the pairing for this was Super Pastel, Tiger, Triple Hit, Pied Exanthic Hypo. That's what the sire was. <laughs> and the mama was the Pastel Tiger Double Hit Exanthic Pied. Okay. So, right off the bat, all these babies are going to be 50% head hypos. Just 50% just head hypos? That's for sure. Okay. Because that's super pastel. Right. You're everything pricey. is going to be at least pastel. Okay, got it. So, we know that for sure. So, everything's going to be a pastel, and 50% of them are going to be head hypo. Yep. Got it. All right. So, this is a pastel tiger. Again, you can see these stripes they on on the back part of the animal and because there's so many possible hits in this it's changing the pattern on the snake a little bit too but so what we have pastel tiger these are 66 percent head pod okay 66 percent head exanthic and again 15 50 percent so it's hit hypo it's threes so triple hit possible triple possible hits. triple hit yeah but we have a pastel tiger. Next, we have pastel tiger. Exanthic. You can, yep. Okay. You can definitely see, I got the, one. You can, you can see <laughs> the exanthic. Yep. Uh, again, the tiger. You can see the stripes. Tiger stripes. Right. Tiger stripes. See? So, pastel just tiger. Shi just shines it up a little bit. Yep. Exanthic. Mm -hmm. 50 percent hit hypo okay 66 percent hit bot okay got it so this is a girl and if you notice here people talk about track marks for hip pods right you can kind of see some track marks coming up the side here so that's a pretty good indicator that she's probably hit pod because um, she got track marks. Because she's got this track marks. So okay. she's going to stay here and and see. So there's a good chance she's going to prove either hit hypo or hit pod. Cool. So she's going to stay here. Just got to hold on to her for a few years and find out. There you go. Okay. All right. So put these up and I'll show you. I don't think we're going to show them these. <laughs> All right. What we have here. That's a pod ball python. Pie ball. I got that. Pie ball. So what we have here is a pastel. Pied. Pied. And then again 50% hit hypo mm -hmm. and 66% hit exanthic. Yep. Got it. So there's a good chance she will prove, you know, either either exanthic or hypo. Mm -hmm. Alright, so something I did mention this probably in the snake is again the tiger gene. So the tiger gene is in this. Well, I don't know. The reason why I don't know is these are probably the first ones, first pods mm -hmm. that potentially have the tiger gene in them. Really? <laughs> we'll get to you next. So we can't um, see it because of the high white and all that stuff. Right. We can, the the pie changes the pattern so much. So is it a possible IDK? It's a possible. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. There we go. But. Let's take a look here at the pattern. So, particularly on this section right here, this saddle doesn't look like any pied saddle that I've ever seen before. Right. And you'll notice a lot of brokenness in in some of this pied. A lot of different colors. See the gray right here? Mm-hmm. So there's a lot of indicators there in this animal that make me believe that this is a pastel tiger pie. So, potentially the first one, you know, ever made. Ever made. Yep. Um, I haven't quite, this is a girl, I haven't quite figured if I want to keep her or sell her, I'm not quite sure, but, you know, um, I don't know. This is one of the things about breeding snakes is sometimes you just gotta hold on to them or you gotta make tough decisions. Yep. You know, I'm not. I'm not going to sell this girl for an astronomical amount of money. 
But I'm also not going I to mean, sell her. You know, we could sell for eighteen thousand dollars. Yeah, you know, that's mm -hmm. not a problem at all. Yeah, that'd probably be okay. Yeah, it'd probably be okay. But I'm I'm not going to sell it just as a pastel ride right. either because there's so many there's could be there's two hits that are possible and, hidden and, and, and multiple variable variables because we can't see the yeah, white. Okay. So anyway, uh, pretty cool. So this next one is kind of the quote unquote cream of the crop here. All right, so what we have here is one that does wants to be stubborn. Just being a ball pipe. This we think is super pastel and obviously pied. Obviously pied. Sixty six percent head exanthic, mm -hmm. fifty percent head hypo, and pretty doggone sure that this is influenced by the tiger gene. Okay. Because I have never ever seen this before in a pied. I've talked to several other breeders and they've never seen anything like this either. With the reduced pattern and the crazy pixelation and different mm -hmm. colors that are in these saddles, pretty good pretty good guess that this one, if not the one we just showed for sure, this one is probably the first tiger pied in existence. Really? Yeah. So this is a tiger pied supposedly or Possibly. Yeah. So super pastel, what I believe is tiger, mm -hmm. pied. It's cool looking. Yeah. So and it's still poss possible ghost, possible exam yeah. you know, exam Still 66% head exanthic, 50% head hypo as well. Okay. And it very well could be, you know, with those hidden hits, you know, they could be tricking this pattern out as well. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not really sure. But either way, this girl for sure is staying here. Definitely not selling this one. Yeah, and just to find out what it is. You know what it is. Look at the head stamp. Yeah. So it's, it's just done it all around. That's cool. And it's a girl too? Yep. Nice. So all these ones I just showed were our girls. Mm -hmm. we only made one male and it was just a pastel tiger like the first one. Yeah. Kind of like last time when I got mine, it was just one boy. It was, yeah. And the rest of the girls were like, oh, hey, wow. Yep. Yeah. Anyway. Um, again, breeding snakes, you never really know what you're going to get. And it's just part of mm -hmm. part of it. So you either have to be willing to, to sit on animals and raise them up and see what you got, or you have to be willing to, to part with them for a X amount of money, depending on what they are. So yeah. just think about that. I know I was never, I, I was focused on when I done this pairing was hitting the Xanthic pot. Cause that's what you want. That's what I want. Yeah. I never thought about the tiger influence being on the pod. Never crossed my mind. But now I've opened up a whole new can. That's right. That because you, you were just seeing that one thing that you were and didn't factor in the other little things going on. Yep. Yeah. So what if the tiger is doing this to pods? This opens up or could potentially open up a whole new variable to to doing pods. Yeah, absolutely. So we can start stacking that gene on some of these pods and man, who knows what the world may hold. So, you know, just one of those hidden mistakes, I guess yeah. you could say. Or one of, one of good mistakes. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, all right. So after the video that we filmed the other day, uh, we were editing or Cassie was editing and I was proofreading or proof. That's not proofreading. That would be proof watching. Uh, anyway, we decided that I would, uh, I would reach out to Joe off and ask him about his father. Um, I was not correct. So his father was not actually part of his breeding process and he was just beginning or was about to start helping in that process uh, right before he passed. And in memory of him passing, Joff decided to call the Exanthic line that he proved out in 1998, the Joloff line Exanthic in his father's memory. So that's why it's named Joloff line Exanthic. So 26 years ago today, Michael G. Joloff passed away. So we wanted to give him a thanks as well as his son. Thanks for helping 
your son had the passion and the desire to do this, to breed, to prove out that line of Exanthic and name it after you. And we dedicate this video to you 26 years ago today. So we waited till Monday, which is May the 18th, 2020, to do this video and have it posted on this day in your memory. Thanks for watching, and I hope that we were able to learn some stuff and get a little back history on the Joe Offline Exanthix as well as the Tigers. And we'll see y'all next week. Deuces. Say bye, Craig. Bye, Craig. <laughs> Hey Tony, you need to uh, you need to wash that deli cup right there. I need to what? You need you need to wash that deli cup right there. And that, I mean, rinse it out first. Oh, oops. <laughs> yeah. I guess that's southern word for the day. Oh my goodness, Greg. I had to. I had Cassie. I had to when you said it earlier. You gotta wash that. Yeah. Rinse it out when you're done, y'all. Later. Thanks for watching our daddy's channel. Make sure you subscribe.